This isn't going to work well. <laughs> it's fun. If you're thinking about getting into model railroading or you're already an addict, boy, do we have a project for you. In this episode, we put the track back and I'll show you what that means starting right now. All right, rail fans, let's get into this. You have seen me put in bench work. You have seen me cut plywood and put in lighting and run power and reinstall modules. But to date, we haven't actually done anything that'll allow us to run a train. Well, that changes today because right now I'm taking you into the hobby room. We're gonna start laying some track to reintegrate both modules and see how close we can get to running DCC. So let's head out to the hobby room right now. Hey, welcome back to the Hobby Room. Today is February 13th, and I wanna get this module in and reconnected and operational. We're gonna see if we can get that done in one day, but uh, ha, things don't always work out like that, but we're gonna give it a shot. First thing on the agenda, though, is I need to continue the bench work along here and connect it to that other piece. Uh, as you know, that this was an afterthought to add this later. And so the bench work didn't really accommodate it and it's just sitting on top of there now. So we're gonna put that piece in first and then I'll take you up here and show you some of the track enhancements and repairs that we're gonna do to get this thing operational. I'm sure some of you folks out there are much better with math than I am. Um, I'm just sort of a measure it and cut a little too big and see how it fits and keep fine tuning it. I had to do that on some of the riser sections we did too. Just get close and then just keep fine tuning it till it fits. So. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take a measurement from way back over here to ah, that piece of framework over there. Well, look at that. It looks to be about four feet. First thing I'm gonna do is go cut me a four foot piece of one by three, and then we'll see how to make the bevels on the ends. Let me go cut that and I'll bring it right back. All right, so I'm back with my freshly cut piece of framework. And as I anticipated, uh, I started out at four feet, 48 inches, and I kept taking a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more off to make it fit in this space. And I ultimately beveled that piece of it right there. Easy enough, however, and it's going to fit in just like that. So what I'm gonna do now, <clears throat> I'm going to drill a couple of pilot holes in this piece of wood right here because uh, I'm going to be drilling at an angle in it basically and then set some really long drywall screws boom connect that to that let's get on that Should probably go in like this Let's move these models out of the way because I got a lot of time in this stuff, you know? Anyway, get that out of the way. Just styrofoam right here and then plywood and then of course the frame. So I'm gonna send this screw all the way through the styrofoam and into the frame. Boom, just like that. All right, so I got the front of it screwed down. That was kind of painless, actually. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through and put some screws around the rest of it, and then let's take a look at what we're gonna do on the track. Okay, so this is the part I think I wanna concentrate on first, and it's the stuff uphill where it feeds the coal mine and the logging camp from Switch Junction. Originally, I have this siding just sitting here to store a couple cars on, and through this turnout, it came up a very steep, steep grade to get up here into the coal mine. And then of course it went along through there, through the tunnel and over to the logging camp. A change I'm gonna make uh, this time around is from this turnout to have this siding come all the way straight through to the coal mine and get rid of this piece and this turnout and all that all together. Even though the coal mine only takes up a short space over here, I can park maybe three or four coal cars there and simulate that they've all been loaded, maybe a slightly bigger coal load and then have it come down to a gentler slope and back onto there. This is hopefully going to allow me to take this mountain thing here and sort of bring it down into this little bit more 
and just eliminate the need for a tunnel portal. It'll just disappear behind the mountain. So to get started, I think we should do some demo. I'm just going for it with my dikes. We'll start with that up this side of the turnout and then see what it takes to get those rail joiners off of there. All right, that's the track. Let's see what about getting those rail joiners off of there. And that one came off too. I think uh, that's from the I Suck at Soldering administration, which is why that came off so easily. And then get the same thing done back over here. I went ahead and just laid a piece of track in here real quick to kind of simulate or to represent where this track is going to go. So we can take a look at something uh, that's obviously needs to get worked on and that is right here. You can see the track is sitting up above this void right here. So not a big deal. I mean, uh, I liked this feature when I put it in originally, but um, it's got to go. So we'll come up with a way to just feed in a bit of a riser here that comes in like that uh, and that spans that. Well, as I was putting in uh, something, this piece of tempered hardboard here um, as a means to sort of bridge that exactly that is what happened i see this cool sort of gully thing coming down and it goes all the way up into here some kind of way i'll get this cork road bed in up to here and some kind of a riser thing up to here but then i'm just gonna let the track go right over the top of that um and later on i'm gonna build a bridge or something to put under there because i think that will look awesome I went ahead and got rid of this the track that's back there and there's this, this hole in here in the styrofoam that we need to bridge right now. So what I've got here, I got a piece of tempered hardboard that fits right in there pretty nicely. I think either I can leave it at the level of the cork road bed and just go right across it. Or actually just take out some of that styrofoam, make it go below that. But the thing is, we've already got the road bed, the cork up to here and here. I'm putting a little piece in there, I don't think it's going to get me anywhere. So I think I would rather just recess that right down to flush. And then we can just track right over it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think we put some glue on that and uh, let that set up. And then when we go to do the track, we'll just go straight across there. All right, well, this is kind of cleaned out uh, well enough here. I think we're just gonna lay a piece of track because yeah, we haven't laid track in a hundred years. So let's get some track laid, shall we? Uh, I've got me a little piece here I'll just set in. Looks like we'll cut it right here.
Okay, we'll go ahead and slip this side on. Well, as is typical uh, for things I do, I, I measured that and they're too long. So already we have expansion and contraction happening in the hobby room. Not so awesome. So I need to pull it off and just nip a fraction off of that so I don't warp the track. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll bring it back. All right, I think we got those to the right length now. Just slide those rail joiners on. All right, so I've got a piece of new track in. Yeah. What we've just done is connect the logging camp to, well, something down here. So with that piece of track back there that serves the logging camp, I think what we should do is go ahead then and replace the cork road bed in here. Now, here's the thing. I guess uh, it turns out we were a little premature with tearing that out because um, it's just going to go right back in up to here. And then we're going to have this little bridge component we're going to put in over there. So um, I think what we'll do is if I just stretch this out and look at the natural contour, that cork road bed is stopping right about there. So what we'll do is go ahead and put a mark there. And then I'll just cut that and then we'll sort of cock that end there. And then for now, we'll just let the track just sort of air over that onto the styrofoam back down to connect to that other piece. Nice, nice little bead of that cock up to there. So with the track installed now for the logging camp and the coal mine industries, we're gonna move downhill, and come around to the point where the shea is going to bring the loads of coal and logs to be picked up by the switcher at a switch junction. You can see right there where the tracks used to go, one of them leading right up into where the old engine house was for the shea. So pretty much this track was already damaged right here from the move, whatever. Uh, what we need to do is, there's a rail jointer there I'm gonna pull out. Pull this piece of track out right up to there. I've got a long radius turnout in here that'll make the turn smoothly. In the very first version of this, I had a number six turnout, which is sharper. And I always kinda had a problem in here. And so we're gonna eliminate that problem by putting in a long radius turnout. And then the second turnout here splits it up between the siding and then going back into the engine house. So to get right going on this thing, get the old nippers out, figure out where we want to cut this thing, and just cut it like that. <clears throat> Oh, look at that, a pallet broke loose. Put it back. I think we need to cut this cork road bed right here because it's a little uneven. Now you guys realize the irony here, right? I had a curved turnout in back over here that was gonna turn and go down to the bottom deck when we were adding a second deck at the old place. And I had to get rid of this little mini yard here to do that. Well, guess what? We're putting the mini yard back in because now it goes up to a layout uh, from a different point. So I get to put this back in, which is kind of cool. It means the shade can live down here again and not up at the logging camp. Here, that's sort of cleaned out for a second. Let's just see how this is gonna look, shall we? We may need to add a little piece of cork right in here. Just, this is a turnout and we don't want to see that action happening right there. We don't want to see that. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a little slice of cork road bed in there. Okay, well it took some doing. That sits right in there. 
Hey, one of the things uh, I learned earlier on is I really don't like to glue down the turnouts. I kind of like them to float. And here's why. If To glue them down, you got to push down on them and they start, see, look at that. See how that moves? I just, I'm not a big fan of torquing a turnout because it seems to always cause derailment problems. And so we're not going to do that on this one. Hey, so now it's February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day, by the way. Uh, we had a great day out here in the hobby room yesterday, getting all this set up. Um, the caulking is dried. I have one problem over here. I didn't put down enough of the caulk, and so uh, it's loose. We're gonna have to redo it, but whatever. Um, right now, what I wanna concentrate on is getting this turnout and this turnout reinstalled and the little pieces of track in between them. Once that happens, all I need to do is get me some track going up this other side and put some DCC on this thing. Maybe get the old Shea out and run it. Yeah, won't that be exciting? So let me bring in a little closer and let's take a look at putting these turnouts in. All right, so to prepare this turnout for installation, uh, you guys have seen me do this before. It's not really rocket science, but we need to cut out the railroad ties right at the end so we can slip on a rail joiner. Uh, not certain why they don't just make them that way, but they don't. At least not a Pico turnout. And then I like to go through just for housekeeping purposes, just for the fun of it. And uh, just get the sharp edges off with the file. I'm just using this little jeweler's file that, again, was in my toolbox outside and got rusted, but it still works. I've just found that by doing this, taking the extra step to prep the turnouts and the track pieces, the trains flow a little smoother over them. Okay, real quick, just to refresh everyone's memory, this is a Pico turnout and it is the Ensel Frog turnout, which means this piece right here is plastic. It doesn't conduct electricity. You can get the Electro Frog version where that piece is metal and will conduct electricity and we're talking about this little teeny little piece here right at the end being electrified it's supposed to help um, smaller engines and stuff get over there better uh, big diesels don't really have a problem with it but you've got to be able to switch that polarity on that frog if you do that and for this operation i i don't really want to spend the money or go through the hassle of switching it so for the most part you're going to see insole frog turnouts on the layout well to say that that went smoothly would be a lie because i have had a difficult time getting the rail joiners onto all that existing track it uh that was quite the pain in the rump if i may say so hey but just before we move upstream to this exciting riser i'm going to show you that's right baby it's like four percent um i want to introduce you to this i made this coal trestle uh, back in the day to uh, be on the original port at Port Smith before I rearranged the port. But I just remembered I had it and look at that deck right there on it. Eh? I think we're gonna do this. I think we cut that deck off and stuff. I think we shove it under there. Boom, reusing more stuff and it won't take near as long cause I don't really have to scratch build anything. Just cut it to fit. That's awesome. All right, anyway, enough of this side of the layout. Let's get over here and come up the hill. And now here we are over on this side of the layout on the sort of the uphill side away from Switch Junction. Uh, if you remember back here, we've got the tunnel from the original layout, logging camps up there, looking beautiful. What I'm going to do now is get this little piece of track out of here and then continue this track up and around on this 4% grade to join up on the back side. So again, we have to do a little bit of demo, but I'm not, uh, well, I'm not looking forward to it because it's going to be just like on the other side, but we're going to have to get it done. So let's get on it.
Okay, so with uh, that kind of cleaned up in there, this is going to curve right in through here. And this little piece of scenery is going to be in the way for right now. So I thought it's only styrofoam. Just cut, do a little terraforming maybe. Like that. So coming up in through here, we start our sort of meteoric rise to this. And your buddy Steve over here made one mistake. Well, <laughs> I've made a million mistakes, but here's another one. I made this plywood right here level with the cork road bed. How's that going to work? Either I continue the track without any road bed on it, which I'm not thrilled about, or we do something else. And here's what I think I've decided to do. I'm going to see if I can gently raise this track up enough where it's not kinked and I can slide the road bed right underneath there and then continue it on. So right here, I'll have a little rise and then it'll keep going. So uh, worst case scenario, if that doesn't work, I'll just cut the track and, and keep going. But I kind of like this idea. So um, cross your fingers. We'll see if this works. Yeah, there's just a small bit of rise in it now, but it's sitting up high enough where I think I can slide the cork right underneath there. Let's see what happens. Here, I got a little piece of cork. It'll fit under there. And we'll just continue the track up on there. Man, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Uh, problem is, I got all this extra scenery in here. That cork row bed is not laying down flat because of it. So I'm going to go through and scrape some more of that out, vacuum it out, and then we'll see if we can continue the road bed up and around the turn. And then we'll go ahead and get going on it. Lots of it through here because I'm going to float it on that caulking. Most people wouldn't do that, but most people aren't Steve the Gubenschlagen. Still haven't found anything to trial this stuff with, so I'm using tempered hardboard right now. And apparently my finger. Slid it in under that little rail piece. Up the grade. And there we go. So that piece of road bed's in, and we're heading up the grade. I'm gonna go through and put the rest of the pieces in around the turn, then we'll come back, lay this piece of track in. And there you go. We have some track lead to connect switch junction to the logging camp module. Uh, all that remains now is to get some wiring done and sort of boost the DCC, see if we can get some locomotives to run in there. Boom, that'll be exciting. That'll be next week. But thank you for being here with me this week. I sure appreciate it. And you know, if you haven't subscribed, you might want to consider doing it. Make sure you like and share this video with somebody and if we're not at 10,000 subscribers yet enter the 10k giveaway this coming Saturday other than that thanks again for being here my name is Steve Brown rail on my friends <laughs>